So in this video, I'm going to attempt to point out and break down the current state of video games. And by the end of the video, what I hope is to convey a, a method in which I believe uh, that there's a real way the gaming industry can be turned around and improved upon. Because I don't really think any of us are happy with most of it. That's why people like me are playing Red Dead Redemption 2 Story Mode five years later. Um, we're, I'm going to try to point out that we, the consumers and the gamers, are the ones that are really steering the ship here. Uh, and of course, it's your money. I'm not trying to tell you how to spend it or what you should and should not enjoy. Uh, with that said, let's get started. Here is a perfect example of an upcoming title and corporate money gouging and completely ripping off their player base. Mortal Kombat 1 is coming in September 2023. This was one of my all-time favorite childhood games. But other than smoother controls and greatly improved graphics, this is still pretty much the same game it's always been. The 2023 version of Mortal Kombat uh, 1 has been completely finished. The levels have been designed. The fighters have been programmed. Even the ones that aren't going to launch with the game, trust me, they're done. However, if you buy the regular version, which is a massive $70, and before you say, well, that's just the way it is these days, that, that's, that's what games cost now. Let's break this down. This is a side-scrolling fighter with minimal development hours when compared to a game like the upcoming Alan Wake 2. Uh, minimal hours when compared to some phone games. So with the regular version of Mortal Kombat 1, um, which is like this whole relaunch, remaster, remake trend that we're in right now, it's really what, Mortal Kombat 12. Anyway, you don't get all the fighters with the regular version. You don't even get to play it on its release date. If you spend $110 for the premium version, you get the additional fighters that should be in the regular version of the game, just period, as well as early access. Make no mistake, early access is not early access. It's the actual release date of the game, but it's a release date you have to pay for. You also get some season pass benefits in the premium edition, blah, blah, blah. Here we can already see some of the biggest problems in modern games, as well as the trend this game will follow. Rather than setting a release date for all, and including all of the already finished fighters and levels, the microtransactions have already started before the game has even come out, in the disguise of a premium edition of the game. And people will buy into this shit, which just keeps the cycle going. This game will occasionally release new fighters, levels, and maybe finishers, which are probably already designed, and they'll come out over the course of the game's life, which will be determined by how successful the microtransactions are and how much money they're generating with the game. And each time, they're going to charge the player for these things, and you're going to pay for it in one way or another. Make no mistake about this. All of this will be labeled as content, but it's already done. They're giving you an unfinished game for $70 and withholding the rest of it to sell you down the road. But it's not really content. It's still the same game, and it's not going to add anything new or exciting to the game that is going to give you the thrill of a new release or a true expansion pack. Sadly, we see this in hundreds of ga games now. Some disguise it better than others, but with few exceptions, everything is pay to play or pay to win or both. Who is paying $110 for a side-scrolling fighter based on a game that's 30 years old? Then you add a battle pass on top of that, which is just more and more money to play the same game. Time to wake up. Now we look at one of my personal favorite studios, Rockstar. Back games? I guess. Yes! Woo! Welcome back, man! Which for decades have released solid, story-driven, 
immersive experiences. So how how did they get away with not releasing a DLC or an X pack or whatever you want to call it for GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2? The answer is microtransactions. A year after Arthur Morgan broke down every wall of what a great game can be and pushed it so far past what we, we expect from video games, we still have a market, a fan base, a and a community of people making tribute videos to this game's greatness. I've seen videos where people must have spent 40 hours editing just to say, hey, I appreciated this game so much. It changed me. It moved me. This is what gaming should be. Why we didn't get DLC for Red Dead 2 or GTA 5? Rockstar pulled in, and I'm not making this up. You can look it up. Actually, I'll put the graphic on the screen. Rockstar pulled in a cool $600 million in GTA Online microtransactions in 2019 alone. This is people buying money. As you make some real money, maybe you can buy an apartment so friends can stop by and hang out. Or buy a garage. Fill it with custom vehicles. So, you're not even really earning anything in the game now. It's this behavior from the consumer that made Rockstar and all these other studios think they could get away with garbage like this. Like the GTA Definitive Edition and the re-release of Red Dead Redemption 1 for the PS4. And the only thing that makes sense about that release is that it came to the Nintendo Switch. I guess Red Dead Redemption 1 for the Switch is actually pretty cool. As I said, I love Rockstar. Red Dead is by far my favorite franchise ever. GTA is definitely somewhere in my top five list. So I'm not picking on games here or studios here that other people like that I just personally don't like. Hell, I even lined up at GameStop at midnight to buy San Andreas. But I refuse to buy an RDR1 port. No matter how much I really want to play that game again. Because if I do that, I'm just feeding the beast that wants to kill me. If more people would just stop feeding that beast, the developers would be forced to release actual content. And from a corporate perspective, it makes perfect sense to put in minimal effort to make massive profits. But what doesn't make sense is the player base that just keeps buying season passes and skins while at the same time complaining about how bad AAA studios have become. I can't really criticize games like Fortnite, which uses a pay to play system, because one, you don't ever have to buy anything. And two, the game itself is free. If you're giving away free software and you want to charge people for battle passes, you know what? That's one way of doing business, and, and I think that's justified. Even games that have systems in place that allow players to earn the in game rewards often sell those same exact rewards on the, uh, the game store. And people would just rather buy it than earning it. So you're not really playing the game or getting any sense of completion or accomplishment or challenge. Then you have Ubisoft. And it's not bad enough that Ubisoft single player games like Far Cry and Assassin's Creed have cosmetic purchases that are for single player and you can't earn those skins as in-game achievements. Now they just remake the same games every few years and some of the newer games are more buggy and have less features than the previous versions. You see this in Call of Duty also. But let's go back to Blizzard for a minute. Even Blizzard really just recycles the same ideas over and over or takes community ideas and shuts down the community that created those ideas and then absorbs them into their umbrella with things like classic and hardcore WoW. Those are player inventions, and they're now being implemented and sold as content. Then there's the trading post. We're, we're in what, 10.1.5.7.9.8.2 and a half, right? Dragonflight, 
Why is the trading post in Ogremar and Stormwind? Because it takes time to get there. And that's time that you're logged into their server. And that's time that they can show to their investors. Look at how, how long people play this game. Every little thing like that, the flight path, the hearthstone cooldown, all of it is designed to keep you in the game. Endless storage bags, why? Why not have them? Because no, no one can carry 120 items on them. So it might as well be endless. But if you have to keep filling up your bags and going back to a vendor to unload them, you're spending more time in the game. Not even doing anything, just b being really annoyed by the system. And that looks good for numbers for Blizzard. Then when you get to the trading post itself, right? Which is by all means is just another way to keep players subscribed. And make no mistake, this is just really low budget. I mean a really low budget battle pass. But at least they aren't charging extra for it. Well, in a way they are. But for 15 bucks a month to play the game... And fifty dollars just to buy each expansion. This should be this should be a lot more in this trading post, and they could be doing a lot more with the game. I'm not going to get into a World of Warcraft and what's wrong with World of Warcraft. That's not the point of this video. A great game does not rely on cosmetics to keep people playing, and people shouldn't play just for cosmetics as long as they do. These guys are just reskinning 10-year-old weapons and mounts. I think Blizzard might be at the top of the mountain when it comes to draining players' wallets without the player knowing that it's happening. They're really good at this. They're really good at creating competition and selling content. And there's none there. Then there's the EA Sports approach to gaming. Which is just as bad as, as Blizzard. Actually, it might be worse. They may be the worst. They release a sports title for every major sport every year. And then they cover it with microtransactions. None of which carry over to the next year's version of the game. In psychology, with all the studies that have been done on addiction, you can't tell me that these game developers have not subtly implemented these these studies and the findings of these studies to keep people on the hook. But let me ask you this. Did buying a new skin add anything to the game? After having that skin for a day, did you even care anymore? How about buying in-game cash with real-world currency? Did instantly being able to buy that supercar give you any sense of satisfaction? People are buying their way to endgame. And then complaining there's nothing to do. There are millions of players that are tired of this. Millions of players who know this. I'm not saying anything many people haven't said before me. So what it all comes down to in the end is this. We, the video game consumer, will create the future of what type of content we get by what we do and do not purchase. I'm Undead Aaron. I would normally say I will see you all out west, but I'll see you in the game, if it's a good one.